What's up, Internet? This is Corey from Bitfire. I spent the last 20 years of my software career hacking Internet applications, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Shield On Web Application Firewall. Let's get into it. So I really debated whether or not I was going to do this video. Um, I spent some time with this piece of software and it's not quite what I was expecting it to be. It does do a really good job of blocking and doing rate limiting on traffic. And if you hit one of those rate limits, you're going to see a page that looks like this. The IP address you've been using has been blocked with a 400 response code and an internal code of 83. Uh, I don't know what code 83 is, but presumably that means something internally. It does have a really nice web interface that looks uh, something like this, which is really put together really well. Um, it has some really great interactions uh, from the messenger side. It has, um, here we are, messenger modules. So uh, it integrates with a lot of different systems. Uh, mail, Telegram, Line Notify, SendGrid, Mailgun, Rocket Chat, Slack. Um, some really nice features. It also integrates with your Linux IP chains firewall if you're running on a Linux system, which I believe the software only supports Linux. Um, it has some, it has a couple pages that don't have any stylized information uh, like that one. Uh, and it does support um, MySQL backends, Redis, or just a flat file system. And he also has spent a lot of time uh, integrating with a lot of different systems. So Laravel, Cake, PHP, Symfony, and he has really nice guides here. Setting up for Symfony. It's got all the code that you that you need to run to get it up and running. Uh, so he's done a really good job. Apparently has 100% code coverage on CodeCov. Uh, scrutinizer's rating of almost 10. So um, he's done some really nice things there. Uh, and I really wanted to like this product, but it doesn't do a very good job of blocking malicious traffic. Really, the only thing it can do is rate limit based on your IP address. I've tried um filtering every type of thing i've gone into the raw configuration files i've tried editing in the ui and i really can't get it to block anything other than rate limiting and then it gives me this access denied it does have one other message if you get rate limited where it'll put up um, uh, a page that says please uh, line up and then it'll say, uh, you know, there's so many people using the website right now. Please wait 500 seconds. And then you'll be given 60 seconds to view the web page. I don't know if that's something you want on your website, but he does have that feature. For pure PHP projects, like projects that aren't using frameworks, he does have a nice bootstrap here, which is a single require and two lines of code, which is not bad. Um, but Again, uh, I wasn't able to get it to work. And there's a couple other problems. Well, now we're getting some kind of weird error here where it won't uh, render the stylization on here. I don't know what's up with that. That was just working. Um, this was also just working. Um, overview, this still works. Maybe it's an order you view them in. Ugh. God, this is what I mean by I wasn't sure if I was going to do this video or not. Um, there's not really a lot to test on here because it doesn't actually block um, most traffic. So right now we have uh, this, my IP address has been blocked. So we can go ahead and uh, unblock that. We'll go to MySQL, which is the back end the system is currently using. And we can select star from the filter logs and uh, it's empty. Okay, uh, maybe it was, oh, it's the rule list. From rule list, select from the rule list. And there's one rule here for localhost. So let's go ahead and truncate the rule list. And now we have access to our internal exploitable app again. It takes, 
anywhere between six and 11 milliseconds to run. So expect your web pages to slow down by six to eight milliseconds on average per request. This 11 and 12 is the highest I've seen it. Here you get unusual behavior, get a CAPTCHA, but I don't have it integrated with the CAPTCHA, so that's pretty easy to bypass. You might need to actually go to reCAPTCHA and get a key to add it to get that to work. Um, unfortunately, things like this, right? XSS script alert one, right? If you wanted it to block anything, that's what you'd want it to block. Um, we can replace this with document.cookie. And here's our shield on cookie. I haven't found a single request that I can get it to filter. The UI uh, usually works. I don't know why it's giving me troubles right now. Um, okay, now it's back. Here we go, XSS protection. So you can see I have all the protections turned on. It has this thing for single variable. I've tried putting in the name of my variable I wanted to protect in there. It's got a nice little pop-up. Um, but, I'll okay, say file put contents. Okay, so it's unable to edit that file. Let's go ahead and give it access. So ch own dub 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 data shield on firewall star. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to update this config firewall JSON file, and this is what it actually reads before every run. So let's try that again. We'll add our XSS variable. We'll set the type to get. We'll submit. Setting saved. Our morning went away. And if we look in here for XSS, we have XSS protections on. And here's our XSS variables a get parameter. We're also trying to block it as a post parameter. Uh, and yet it doesn't block anything. Uh, if we look at the raw config file, we can see XSS protection for get is set to true. I can't get this to block anything no matter what I do. Um, I also have a SQL injection here. We'll try a really basic filter, union select one. That gets through just fine. I, I really don't know how to make this thing block like really obvious types of, of um, attacks. If I go injection equals, we'll try an object injection. Um, and that gets through just fine. Um, I don't know what else to test to see if I can get this to block anything. Um, the CAPTCHA does work if you request too fast. We can try Apache Bench. Uh, let's try running 300 requests against it and see if we can get it to add a block. So if we look at the, oh, you guys can't, you guys can't see my SQL. Let's pull this over here. We look at our current rule list. We're not blocked. Let's send 300 requests. And we'll select again. And here's our block, right? And now if we come back, we get blocked. This is the only thing I've been able to get it to block. Um, your mileage may vary. I think this is an interesting project that has a lot of promise. There's been a lot of work done on it. It's just not quite ready for uh, for use. If you want something that rate limits, um, that could be helpful. Um, you know, I can't get it to block. It has a bot filter, but I can't get it to block on my curl request, which I would expect it to probably block a curl request. Exploitable. I have it set to the strictest settings I could get. And that works just fine. Let's try changing the user agent. Let's try changing the user agent to mass scam. That gets through. Let's try SQL map. What's the SQL map injection? SQL map user agent. What is the SQL map user agent? User agent. User agent, user agent. Uh, SQL map 
what is the user agent? Use a random user agent. What's the default user agent for a SQL map? Uh, it's possible to use a user agent, use a custom user agent. I don't want to use a custom user agent. I want the default user agent. User agent Firefox. Uh, what is the, I don't know if this even has a default user agent. It's, okay, here we go, SQL map, SQL map. Let's try that. Let's see if we can get it to block SQL map. Nope, nothing doing. And we'll look at the headers up here. So this is, this is, it looks like some JavaScript that it injects here in the header. That's interesting. Uh, Cause this is not definitely not part of our website, but this is maybe part of a block page. Let's see, is this a block? Yeah, this is a block page. So it did block it. Okay, cool, very cool. So, user agent SQL map, it blocks. Let's try user agent mass scan, it blocks that. Let's try user agent curl, blocks that. What if we say Mozilla slash 5.0? Okay, okay, cool. Let's look at Firefox user agent. So I believe this has one other interesting feature, which is that it's actually quite useful. It will, I've spent some time looking into this and it will block headers or any requests that don't have uh, a language uh, header. And uh, I think there's one more. So if we look, we have no, right? So we're missing a couple important headers here. That is configured here on, is it settings? Session logs, deny attempts. These are the rate limiting settings. Uh, components, here we go, header, here we go. Analyze visitors header information. So deny visitors without common header information. So we need accept. So let's add dash H and we'll accept foo. Let's make sure that got sent correctly. Accept foo, okay. Now, if I remember correctly, this, uh, there's a case bug, at least in my US version, where it's looking for these things with these particular cases, so uppercase A, and if it's not, if your browser doesn't send them, like my version of Chrome sends all lowercase, sends all lowercase um, headers, and it blocked it because of the way it's doing the lookup. So I think I've actually changed this version to not require that. Okay, so we've got all of our headers. Let's see if we change this, accept foo, accept language, foo, and accept encoding, foo. Yeah, it still doesn't like us. Your IP address, oh, the IP address you're using has been blocked. Oh, of course. Well, that's gonna make it a little more challenging. Uh, let's try this one. And that one gets through just fine. Okay, cool. Let's take off one of these headers and that gets blocked. And if we look, an RP address has been blocked. So we can't get anything through anymore. So let's clear the block. And so as you can see, you have to have these three headers. That's actually kind of a cool feature. Um, let's see if it'll accept different cases. Yeah, and it will, good. So now that we have a valid headers, let's try those bad user agents again. Mass scan, nope. That gets through SQL map 1.4.4. That gets through. So really the best features I've been able to find on this product are rate limiting, 
and requiring specific headers uh, on the request, which actually is kind of kind of useful. So if that's useful to you, uh, I hope you found something worthwhile in this video. Um, and uh, if you guys want to check out a different type of firewall, you can go over to GitHub bitslip6 slash bitfire to download our free um, PHP firewall. We'll be doing a review on that one a little bit later, um, going over the configuration and how it works. And we can see some of the stuff that that firewall blocks. So anyways, thanks for your time, guys. Look forward to talking to the next one. Ciao.